I think when people grow up in Louisiana, their expectation level is set really high because they're around such great cuisine from, you know, day one. And how lucky we are here in Louisiana to have everything, you know, at our fingertips, the Louisiana seafood and all the wonderful ingredients to make those wonderful recipes. Thanks for joining us on Louisiana's Playground Podcast, your roadmap to all things Lake Charles, Louisiana. I'm Brady Raynard. And I'm Anna Strider. Today, we are bringing you episode number 23 as we continue to have fantastic conversations about all of the amazing things that are going on here in the lake area in southwest Louisiana. And let me tell you, this personal itinerary that y'all have been building it has got to be getting full. There's, You must be planning multiple trips by now. At least I would be. Yeah, you're going to have to because you can't do everything that you want to do here in Lake Charles in a single trip. In this episode, we'll talk to Jan Gourley. She is with Adfish, who is behind the Louisiana Food and Wine Festival, which, of course, is upcoming starting September 14th. So it's going to be a weekend full of fun. And I can't wait to really dive into that conversation here today. That's right. It's going to be a four-day weekend full of everything that there is to do, eat, taste here in Southwest Louisiana. But before we get started with the fun conversation today and where you should be booking your tickets, we are going to get started with our show as we always do with the Taste of Louisiana in the segment we call On the Eats. You should know the drill by now. We go to a local restaurant, we sample what they've got, we'll tell you all about it, and basically give it a glowing recommendation because every place we go deserves a glowing recommendation. And another stop on your food itinerary here in Lake Charles should be 121 Artisan Bistro. That's right. The Bistro has been open for over a decade here, right near downtown Lake Charles. And it's a really great location because you're just moments off the interstate there on off I-10 on the downtown Lake Charles exit and right off of Shell Beach Drive, which is the beautiful oak lined street right along the lakefront there. Great walking paths and perfect spot to catch a sunset there. So ideally located and the perfect place to indulge yourself in some of the finest Italian fare here in Southwest Louisiana. And it's a restaurant that's really made a name for itself over the last decade. It's one of the three sister restaurants that's owned by Ben Herrera, Restaurant Cala, and James 710, the other two. And they are all really a casual fine dining restaurant where you get really upscale food, But not quite the stuffy atmosphere. It's a much more relaxed and really just nice, comfortable atmosphere for sure with the the food being served. Absolutely. The dishes that they serve at all three locations really speak to that contemporary Louisiana Southern style in just a friendly, casual atmosphere. It's perfect for a date night or a celebration dinner of any fashion or you just want to catch a happy hour with your best friends. It's a spot to do it. At 121 Artisan Bistro, the cuisine of choice here is Italian fare, and they do it incredibly well. Their restaurant is really known for its brick oven pizzas, its wine and house-made cocktails. Of course, they have delicious pastas, ribeye, salmon, filet, fried oysters, and so much more, and even gluten-free options. I mean, gluten-free with pasta, they really know what they're doing here. And I really like that their pasta isn't just typical American pastas that you're going to find in in most Italian restaurants. These are some that are really going to be hard to replicate in anywhere else you go. Uh, Things like uh, Autovina and stuff like braised boneless short rib, which is actually Herrera's grandmother's recipe. And boy, is it delectable as well. But I really like how he challenges the dishes. They're not what you typically would expect. And I think because of that, it's really allowed 121 to make its mark in the community. That's right. As soon as you sit down at your table at the restaurant, it's got this really comfortable feel inside and you are treated with a display of fresh bread. It is buttery and has like this crispy Parmesan herb. You know, it's that salty, cheesy, garlic. uh, It's one of my like top three or four favorite breads I've ever had. It is incredible. And I don't say that lightly. The bread is unbelievable. 
So the bread comes out and you have your olive oil and your balsamic vinegar on the table there. It, it, of course, salt and pepper. So the perfect starter. And that's just to get us going. We then ordered an appetizer to start off. And when talking with our fantastic server, um, they recommended that we get a combo deal, which isn't necessarily like loud and proud on the menu, but we got the a plate that was half of the fried calamari and half of the fried Parmesan shrimp. And this was the way to go. Oh, I loved both of them a lot. Obviously, the calamari, you got two different types of pieces. You had the rings and then obviously the smaller, really crispy, little chewy. Um, but the calamari rings, that was probably the most tender calamari I've ever eaten. And it paired so well with the um, basil marinara that's that's with the calamari. Just chef's kiss. Mwah. And as much as I love fried calamari... The fried shrimp here were they were so they were large fried shrimp and battered lightly. It had like a light crust on it and the Creole honey mustard. Let me tell y'all, you just want to dip the whole shrimp in. Like half of it should be covered in this dip, and you're still going to get that incredible flavor of the fried shrimp. Just a perfect appetizer. Light enough. We have the lemon that we squeezed across, all of it. I mean can't get enough of those great appetizers and somehow we had room for entrees not much no. not much room but i think that's justifiable why i went with a staple for myself a salad but not just any salad i went with their wedge salad it was a hearty salad so they have your traditional iceberg lettuce that they cut there the wedge that everyone knows and loves and then they topped it with onions boiled egg bacon fried chickpeas and those fantastic blue cheese crumbles that I absolutely love. On top was a balsamic glaze and on the bottom layer is kind of where they put that blue cheese dressing so that when you cut into the salad and scooped all of this deliciousness up that blue cheese was on the bottom and oh my goodness like I didn't know I would love a salad so much but I did. You also got the soup, though, right? Oh, my gosh. I did. I did get the and, tomato and I, and I, soup. And I know uh, that I'm kind of preempting you there, but that bread pairs. You know, we talked about that Parmesan garlic bread at the start. It pairs. It's almost like a match made in heaven with that and then the tomato basil soup, the way that it dips in it. I can't recommend getting both of those enough. It was a great lunch pairing between the salad and the soup. I highly recommend both of those options. And so I went with what was the special of the day, which was a stack of Cajun fried eggplant uh, on the top of some angel hair pasta. It had some lump crab meat um, and then a seafood cream sauce with some sauteed shrimp there on the side. It was a twist on uh, the staple on the menu, which is the Mona Lisa dish uh, by sous chef uh, Mimi Armistead there. So uh, I was really impressed with the flavors and the presentation, obviously, uh, of the dish. Uh, I'm not a big eggplant fan, but found myself continuously going back for another bite and another bite. So maybe I am a big eggplant fan or I'm a big fan specifically of 121's eggplant dish because it was really, really good. And then the, the shrimp with that very creamy uh, sauce that really packed a punch. It was a lot of flavor in the seafood cream sauce, uh, but not too rich, which I think is kind of that that delicate line that you have to toe. Um, and I think that they do it very, very well. And overall, I was really impressed so much so that I've, I, I started thinking, man, I'm kind of getting full from all that I was eating and I was still not stopping, which is typically a good sign for how good a dish ultimately is. As you can tell, we had an incredible lunch at 121 Artisan Bistro. They are open for lunch and dinner and truly one of those Lake Charles staples that you've got to stop in and try. So head on over and order up a pizza, a pasta, a special of the day. and Maybe even a burger. Maybe even a burger. And let us know what you think. From a great meal to a great guest, we welcome on Jan Gorley of the Adfish Group, a company she and her husband created to promote culinary-themed festivals around the South. Jan, a Louisiana native, formed her own agency in Atlanta over 30 years ago and now uses that experience to help destinations showcase their culinary delights. The Adfish Group has created several festivals already, including the Savannah Food and Wine Festival and the St. Augustine Food and Wine Festival. And now, the newest one. 
the Louisiana Food and Wine Festival here in Lake Charles. Welcome to the show, Jan. Thank you. Thank you for having me. We are so excited to have you on the show today, Jan. Each episode, we talk about so many of the great things that Southwest Louisiana has to offer from our big city amenities, of course, to our small town charm. And this particular conversation is about a really wonderful new event, the Louisiana Food and Wine Festival, that we are bringing to Southwest Louisiana, just really making everything about visiting a little bit more wonderful. So before we get ready, though, to have the com- great conversation, we are going to get started with a few questions to get to know you a little bit better. Okie doke. The first one, crawfish or gumbo? Crawfish. Crawfish. Why crawfish? Because I can't get it where I live. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. That is, because people do gumbo I can across make, I can South. make some mean gumbo. I can't make crawfish <laughs> if I don't have them. <laughs> no, it is a specialty. There are restaurants in the region and area though that will ship oh, yeah. crawfish absolutely yeah, all over that's the about nation your, that's about your best bet you're not getting the fresh crawfish <laughs> <No>. in florida <laughs> <laughs> all right next question poolside or beachside 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 well you said you're in florida so that <laughs> makes a lot of sense do you frequent the beaches there not really not as much as i'd like to but <laughs> uh yeah i mean you know beach for sure ocean what is it about the beach the ocean. Just the sound <laughs> of the waves, the yeah, water. Yeah, absolutely. The yeah. smell of the, when you walk down to the beach, you know you're at the yeah, beach. Yeah, we have a pool water. at home. I can, you know, I can go to the pool anytime. So. <laughs> All right, the final question. Concert or comedy show? Concert. Concert. Why concert? <laughs> I, I just love music. I'm a pre- I have pretty eclectic taste, so any concert is good by me. Now that we've learned a little bit more about you and how you enjoy uh, your time when in Lake Charles, because this isn't your first time, of course, Lake Charles is a wonderful place to visit. Let's get into the task at hand, which, of course, we're talking Louisiana Food and Wine Festival. Before we start diving in all the way, can you kind of just break it down for us? What is the Louisiana Food and Wine Festival? This is the inaugural coming up yeah, this year. Absolutely. So, you know, Louisiana Food and Wine Festival, the name in itself is pretty ambitious, right? Because who can make it Louisiana food any better than Louisiana, the entire state? So a Louisiana Food and Wine Festival in Lake Charles is going to be spectacular because we get a chance to showcase Southwest Louisiana, you know, Cajun and Creole heritage, and the things that really make Louisiana famous, and even New Orleans, is, you know, showing off those types of foods and the traditional foods of Louisiana. So the culture and heritage of, you know, just having a showcase of the entire state here in Lake Charles is going to be pretty phenomenal. Um, It's basically going to be four days of culinary, music, basically beverages of all kinds and uh, kind of like a a really neat Louisiana party uh, in Lake Charles celebrating food and wine. This was clearly something that we needed here as a state of the food and wine festival and bringing that to our destination is just an incredible experience. Where did the idea spark? So I, I'm from New Orleans and always wanted to do a festival in Louisiana and, um, We actually had mentioned it to some mutual partners with Visit Lake Charles that, you know, we always thought about doing a festival in Louisiana, never thought about Lake Charles. Uh, And they happened to mention, you know, well, Visit Lake Charles is kind of interested in bringing a big food and wine type of event to southwest Louisiana. So just kind of started talking. And the more we did, realized how much potential there was and how, I guess, um, in terms of big world-class food and wine events taking place in the state, what a void there was to fill in Southwest Louisiana. So, um, you know, pulling not only from Louisiana, but from Houston and Texas and the Southeast, we've actually sold more tickets in Alabama, which is kind of crazy, than anywhere else. So the festival is actually going to pull from the entire Southeast and Southwest, um, which is exciting. I mean, we're bringing, you know, visitors to Lake Charles to experience this unique heritage and culture here and food and everything. So it's, uh, we're excited about it. And it's going to be four great days of different kinds of events, but all centered around food and beverage and um, wonderful party. 
Now, you'd mentioned you're from Louisiana, so obviously you're very familiar with the state and the cuisine and everything that we have to offer here. What is it do you feel like is so special about Louisiana that really feels like that this was a void that we needed to celebrate? Yeah, so I, I think that only people that, and, and this is going to sound a little crazy, but I think when people grow up in Louisiana, their expectation level is set really high because they're around such great cuisine from, you know, day one. Um, and, and I've lived in Atlanta, I've lived in, you know, major cities in South Carolina as well. And it's really, I think it's, it's the ingredients that people don't understand the history behind the Creole and the Cajun, you know, recipes. Um, I've, I've had, I've had the fortunate opportunity to work with some great gala chefs in South Carolina and they come close to Louisiana, but it's not the same. And it's like, you know, only, I think people that have actually made that food or have grown up tasting that food understand how, you know, impactful that food, those foods are and how lucky we are here in Louisiana to have everything, you know, at our fingertips, the Louisiana seafood and all the wonderful ingredients to make those wonderful recipes. And also, too, when you were talking about pool, the different locale that are able to come and pooling from different areas, too. Why Lake Charles over anywhere else in the state do you feel like was the best decision there beyond our interest in wanting to host? Right. I think the um, the thought process was, you know, there are a lot of uh, available hotel rooms with the casinos and lots of ways to grow the festival that some other locations may not have that availability throughout the state. I mean, just having the accommodations alone is important. When you have folks that come in for food and wine festivals, they like to spend their money on eating and dining out and entertainment. I mean, you hit the nail on the head there. Entertainment, food. I mean, you can plan a whole long weekend just around that alone, coupling that with a four-day festival of right. events. It is a match made in heaven, yeah. if you're asking and me. And if people that like to do recreational things, I mean, there you go. You've got that aspect as well. So. And it's a great time of the year to be here in mid-September when this is going to be taking place. Still a great time to go charter fishing like we yes. talked about earlier this summer. I know there's a great lineup of entertainment going on at the casinos like you mentioned and just a lot of the great um, attractions that we have in the community. I will say, you mentioned that it's only people here in Louisiana that are born that understand <laughs> that richness of the flavors of food. I'm coming up on eight years and I think I'm just now understanding. And our On the Eat segment has definitely been a big part of that, of just all that it truly encompasses. And we're bringing that to the festival. Yeah, absolutely. Cajun and Creole ingredients and classes and just so many different elements into the four-day extravaganza. Yeah, so um, uh, Chef Edgar Duke Chase, he is going to be part of the the kickoff dinner, the Louisiana's Best Chefs Dinner. Um, Duke Chase is the grandson of Leah Chase, who is the queen of Creole cooking from Dukey Chase's famous restaurant in New Orleans. Um, you know, Duke has cooked cooked with his grandmother for numbers of years, and he's got recipes that, you know, nobody else knows about. And it's just going to be so exciting. He's also doing a master class. So just having the talent of that caliber here, uh, along with, you know, tens of, of other chefs that are going to be here and some of them are you know exclusive louisiana chefs uh, we'll have chefs from all over but i think the 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 real core is going to be a showcase of louisiana you know from northern louisiana to southern louisiana now when creating this foundation uh you're with the adfish group which uh, as you explained to us is really an agency that specializes in creating these types of festivals these food and wine uh, culture celebrations. Uh, you've done so in Savannah and St. Augustine. Those experience of, of creating and building those and hosting those, what carries over into making this the best festival from year one? So that's a great question, Brady. I think that the fact that, um, you know, a lot of times in, in markets like that, it takes a while to build up um, not only awareness for a festival, 
but just to have um, the culinary community on board participating, it's just been quite the opposite here, you know. And I don't know if it's because we we know so many folks in in the industry that want to be a part of this. I mean, I've got chefs from Chicago and all over who want to come, um, and I'm trying to say, you know, well, next year, <laughs> <laughs> but. The fact that the the local community, there's you know we've got restaurants basically all over locally that are are, are wanting to get in and, and participate, and I think that it's just the excitement of knowing that you know we've done a few very successful festivals and uh, the the expectation level of being able to to have something that truly is a world class festival in Southwest Louisiana and is really exciting. In those other communities, as their festivals have gotten more popular, have you seen the community really begin to buy in and really realize the type of um, quality of life improvement Absolutely. that really yeah. happens for those for those in the community? Yeah, and and and, and also it's a trickle down. Whereas um, you know we've got folks that are coming in from um, you know places like New Jersey that get to experience a destination for the first time that say, oh man, I'd love to have a home here, you know, like in St. Augustine, or people that'll come here and say, oh, I want to come back and spend a week here and see, you know, this, this, and this. It's really an opportunity not only to build more loyal visitor base, but it's also an opportunity. We've had chefs that want to open restaurants because they, like in Savannah, they they actually participated and said, you know, we're going to open up a concept. It might take us five years, but we want to open up a dining concept in this city. So it, it's kind of a real economic impact that slides from year to year and builds. So it's it, it's definitely, and I, I think too, the community loves it because it's it's something that, you know, they, they're proud to say happens in their backyard. You're truly planting seeds that foster community and development in every single niche area that you all touch as Adfish when you're bringing these different festivals here. Um, I would love to have a few restaurants come out of this festival and see where we're at in five years when we have the conversation just about, is it still a four day or right. have we expanded? What week. type of right. event are we being able to host? Yeah. And the parallel growth between what Lake Charles, the trajectory that we'll be on in the next decade and the food and wine festival, it would be, I'm sure, parallel skyward upward trajectory there yeah i mean we 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 actually uh started the savannah food and wine festival in 2013 and that was before savannah was even on the map as far as a culinary destination uh hugh atchison was just opening up a restaurant there um and hugh did our first festival and just the awareness of creating a festival with talent that includes, you know, celebrity chefs and, you know, world-class winemakers, people start paying attention and say, okay, well, I'm, let's check it. You know, this has got to be a pretty good culinary spot. And it's just a real interesting ripple effect that always takes place. And as you said, Louisiana already catches people's eyes exactly. because if you think of Louisiana, you think of food. You do. They go hand in hand. <laughs> it's part of our culture. It's part of our DNA. I think about gaining five pounds every time I make a trip here. <laughs> Story of my life here as a Southwest Louisiana resident, but wouldn't have it any other way. You mentioned the caliber of talent that will be coming to the shores of Lake Charles for this grand festival. And that really kicks off with the first evening on Thursday, September 14th, with the Louisiana Celebrity Chef Wine Dinner. Tell us a little bit about that. I am so excited about that event. Uh, in fact, we just left Suella doing some last-minute planning, and I'd, I don't know if you guys have been over there, but that is an amazing, amazing building. Um, they have five kitchens. Anyway, so the chefs are going to be just blown away. with They never get to cook in a space like that. So we've got, I think I mentioned Duke Chase from um, Chapter 4 in New Orleans, and Duke is the grandson of Leah Chase. We've got John Currents with um, City Grocery Group in Oxford, Mississippi, but John's from New Orleans, and John was once the seafood king, uh, Louisiana seafood king. Um, 
He is uh, a fantastic chef. We've got Meg Bickford coming in from Commander's Palace. We've got Ryan Hacker coming in from Brennan's. Uh, we've got, uh, I believe, uh, Rebecca Hoppower is going to be doing the, with the Beckery here in Lake Charles, is going to be doing the dessert course. And the chefs at Suella are doing the reception. And it is going to be an unbelievable reception of charcuterie, showcase of boudin, cracklins, gumbo, any kind of local foods that they can showcase they're going to bring into the reception. It's going to be amazing. I'm just imagining someone that is only vaguely familiar with Louisiana food and just the overwhelming tidal wave that this week would will be for them. <laughs> I'm afraid everybody's going to get so full at the reception that <laughs> we'll have six courses following the reception we'll paired to, with wine. You've we'll have to point yourself. out where the walking parks are <laughs> to kind of break it down so that you can make sure to save room That's right. for our all of these different food and exactly. food events, because that's just the beginning of this that's grand right. festival. Yeah. And so then the next day is Friday. It kicks off with the master classes at Suella. Uh, we'll have three of them there. And the, the schedule's on the on the website. Uh, but Duke Chase is going to do a class. We have um, the brand ambassador for Mayenta Tequila doing a class and it's just going to be phenomenal. Uh, we'll have our wine partner do a class. We don't know who the talent is coming in for that yet. And then the final class will be at Bayou Rum Distillery with a uh, with their master distiller and also a tour of the distillery, which will be fa fantastic. And then the evening kicks off with Fire on the Lake and that's at 6.30 to 8.30 at Board de Luck Park. Um, and it'll be uh, a showcase of everything uh, grilled, smoked, barbecued, uh, anything from vegetarian options to, you know, oysters on the grill to uh, we'll have a showcase hog. Um, it's going to be it's going to be quite the show. Um, and that'll be Friday night. Saturday is the grand tasting from two to five. Um, we'll have over 300 different varieties of wine, beers, and spirits to taste, and most likely 20 to 25 restaurants. We've got a, a really cool uh, taste of Louisiana Alley, which will be showcasing different destinations in that alley, like the North Shore, um, Cajun Bayou Country, and they're all bringing in chefs to activate their area in the destination, and we'll have a Louisiana cooking stage. So uh, we'll have um, the Jambalaya Girl will be part of that. So it'll be a real showcase of Louisiana. Very, very fun. In addition to all the wonderful Lake Charles and Lafayette and Baton Rouge restaurants that are participating in the Houston, Chef Benchuan Painter is going to be uh, participating on Saturday, and Chef Benjamin was just named the 2023 James Beard Foundation Best Chef Texas. So we're super excited about that. That is phenomenal. I want to touch on tequila paired with Cajun boudin and crackling. <laughs> Though, how did how did you all come up with that? That's a very unique pairing. In addition to the wines and the beers that we all know and love. But tequila, it's a little bit of a different taste there. It is. It's going to be really cool. You just have to come <laughs> and, and hear all about it at the actual chef's uh, master class. And what I like is that despite the events on paper sounding the same food, music, wine, each you're going to be highlighting a different way yeah. to eat, so to speak, right? Absolutely. So that Friday night is the pit master. Right. And it is, so it'll be really open flame style cooking. Yeah. About, you know, a lot of it might be, um, it could be something like big green eggs and things like that too. So it could be just a variety of smoked, grilled kinds of things in addition to open flame. And then the next day, as you talked about the celebrity chef, that is more just traditional Louisiana Cajun fare. It's actually going to be, we have a, uh, a Best Taste Awards on, Louis on Saturday for the, the Grand Tasting. And that's uh, sponsored by Acadiana Profile Magazine. And so we'll have judges that will go around and judge all of the participating culinary exhibitors that want to participate in the awards. And we have categories like Best Seafood, Best Meat, Best Sweets. Um, so they'll be competing. And, um, and then we'll have a People's Choice voting later that day. So everybody will get to vote for their favorites. And um, we've got a Rouse's uh, Markets cooking demo stage. We have a Louisiana 
cooking magazine stage. We have the Taste of Louisiana Alley. We've got so many, and we've got the Flamethrowers as the band on Saturday, which uh, they're billed as Louisiana's best party band. So there'll be lots of, it'll be kind of like a three ring circus. You'll have to pick and choose what demos you want to see, you know, what drink you want to bring to the demo with you, what food item you might want to grab to catch a class uh, or sit and enjoy the band or just dance or, you know, just uh, graze the entire day. <laughs> and, I, and I love that from an all Louisiana chef night to that Cushon Delay open flame to everyone bringing their best and then wraps up with a brunch. Yes. Yes. I know. I'm so excited about that too. That's at uh, Coffee 30 in South Lake Theater. And it's going to be really, I mean, they are bringing in active stations. It's not going to be a typical Coffee 30 menu. It's going to be a very um, expanded menu with live action stations. And we'll have, it's an all-inclusive beverage ticket. So, you know, we'll have about 12 different spirit booths there with unlimited Bloody Marys and mimosas. And it's just going to be a lot of fun. And Coffee 30 is a their coffee 30 express that's attached to the yeah. south lake theater it's a new restaurant that has come on board there and the amenities of the facilities together are really it's beautiful providing a unique space unlike any other in the state to really complement this and showcase the best of louisiana I'm so excited. There. I, I had no idea how beautiful that space is it is so it's, it's impeccably designed it i have really to give is. it that and all of these amazing activities there will be no shortage of things to do and choices to make about how to dine during the festival but the best part is that the proceeds go back to the united way of southwest louisiana so not only are you getting this wonderful experience but contributing back into our community like we mentioned earlier with that forward trajectory. Yeah, it's, you know, a portion of the proceeds are going to United Way of Southwest Louisiana. And we've also set up a, a culinary scholarship fund for Suella. So uh, we're trying to, you know, give away as much as we possibly can the first year. I think we're building a great foundation to be able to give away a whole lot more next year, which I'm excited about. Uh, but yeah, we, we had some great meetings where we're planning already for next year how to, you know, how to make it bigger and better and, and be able to to really give back in a bigger way. I think it's great that you tied in Soella and being able to give those scholarships there because Soella has the first and only culinary gaming and hospitality program in the state of Louisiana and is really fostering that generation that's coming up now to potentially be that headliner chef five, 10 years down the road right here in our community. So the, that's really phenomenal. I'm so excited about the chefs coming in and being able to cook there because the building is unbelievable. I've never had the opportunity to offer chefs so many amenities to be able to prepare for a dinner, including a hotel suite in the building where they can go chill for a little bit if they need to, yes. <laughs> which is amazing. Well, after hearing about this experience that's upcoming and the different foods and wines and just ultimately a good time to be had if you're interested where can you get the tickets and really book your stay so we have uh, you know the website louisiana food and wine festival where the tickets are available we also have uh some packages that are discounted and it's a, a, a drop down menu it'll say ticket packages um it's really, if you want to kind of experience everything, that's the best. You can save over $100 in buying a package. Um, and we also have partnered with the Horseshoe, Lake Charles, and they have some um, some great rates and packages that are already available on the website. So it can be as a la carte as you'd like, or if you want the whole enchilada, you know, that's available at a discount. And I think it's important to note, and we've touched on it, it's all inclusive. Yes, all, yeah, all the food, all the beverage um, you get a souvenir glass, really nice souvenir crystal glass on Saturday, which is, you know, it's coming in from Germany, which we're excited Ooh. about because it's a beautiful glass. And uh, it's, you know, you can't really appreciate tasting really fine wines in a, not a crystal glass. I'll just say that. I won't say the brand. <laughs> <laughs> that definitely adds to the full element of the Louisiana Food and yeah. Wine Festival. There is so much happening, so mark your calendars September 14th through the 17th. Get your ticket package so that you can experience all 
that this great festival has to offer and truly get a taste of the best of Louisiana. So thank you for being on the show today, Jan. Thank you so much. I'm excited. Thanks again to Jan for joining us here on the show. And thank you for taking time out of your day to join us here on the podcast. If you enjoyed the show, can you please follow our podcast and maybe even leave us a rating or a review, but don't do so on an empty stomach because you're not going to think right. So eat a little bit after hearing all of this and then leave us that rating or review. We really appreciate it. And then head on over to visitlakecharles.org slash podcast where you have a link to purchase your tickets for the Food and Wine Festival. You can find about all of the events happening, things to do, and of course, where to eat here in Southwest Louisiana. I'm Anna Strider. And I'm Brady Raynard. Thanks again for coming play at Louisiana's Playground. Say it to you.